Peace be with you, brother and sister. 感谢神, we give thanks to God that we can gather here in His temple to worship Him. Let us begin our worship service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us quiet our heart and sing the Lord and His temple. Psalm 5, uh, 7 say, But as for me, I will come into thy house in a multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear I will worship towards thy holy temple. Let us all stand and have a words of prayer. Zamichen 让我们全心敬拜为信主的亲人与朋友们让我们有颗清觉的心你都在我们当中
。今天你差遣你仆人传讲你的话语，我要让你的话语来造就我们。至于你的话，以你的话来教训、督己，使我们归正，教导我们学艺。愿你的话充盈在我们的心，也让我们能遵循，让圣灵充满每一位。我们把今天的机会完全交托，求主垂听我们的祷告。我们同心奉靠主耶稣基督的圣名求，阿门。我们一起来唱赞美全能神。Let us sing, praise the Lord, the Almighty.
Please be seated. 现在我们把时间交给陈传道，还有丽丽弟兄传译。Now we hand over the time to Pastor Michael and Brother Ali for the interpretation. Grace and peace from our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. In invite all of us to stand for the reading of God's word. Today's scripture is taken from Isaiah chapter nine, verses six to seven. Ah, today's scripture is taken from Isaiah chapter nine, verses six to seven. We'll read the English first together, and then、uh, followed by the Chinese. 我们先用英文念，过后我们再用中文念一遍。Let's read it together. For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and the peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness, from that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. 婴有一婴孩为我们而生，有一子赐给我们，政权必担在他的肩头上。他名称为奇妙测试，全能的神，永在的父，和平的君。他的政权与平安必加增无穷，他必在大卫的宝座上治理他的国，以公平公义使国坚固稳固，从今直到永远。万军之耶和华的热心必成就这事。Let us pray. Father, we give thanks to you for this time, for your word. We ask that at this time the Spirit of God will come. And minister unto each one of us, speak to us, and grant us listening ears and receptive heart. In all these things, we praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. There's a hymn called "What Child Is This?" Ah, we all know that there is a hymn called "What Child Is This?" The hymn writer asks this question in the opening verse. In the first verse, there is a Uh, that is, what child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet, while shepherds' watch are keeping? And then we see the answer、um, in the chorus. That is the、uh, the writer said this this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing, haste haste to bring him Lord the babe the son of Mary. The writer said, look look, Jesus our King, the angels sing the song of praise. Come come, joy joy, come to him, come to him, come to him, come to him. I would like to use the the name, the title of this hymn, as a sermon for、uh, for this morning. And we will see what this child, what child is this that was born on Christmas Day. So we will look at this mysterious baby. Maybe who is this child on the first Christmas Day? You see, this child that was born in Bethlehem two thousand years ago was not an ordinary child. 两千年前，在伯利恒诞生的这个奇妙的婴孩，不是一个普通的孩子。When we open up scriptures, when we read scriptures, we will see that there are four great prophecy concerning. I mean, in the Old Testament, Old Testament concerning about the coming of this child. 我们研究圣经的话，在旧约圣经你会提到有。And today's message is actually the fourth prophecy. So today, I want to talk about 
This one is also the most well-known uh, prophecy of the fourth. Many, many hymns have been written and around these verses like Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace. Every time when we hear uh, whether it hymns or scripture being read out, people immediately identify these verses to Christmas. But what is the deeper meaning of this prophecy? How was this prophecy received by those who first heard it? In what specific ways does it relate to Christmas? And we will find out in our passage, I mean in our sermon today. So before we look into that, I would like to first uh, look at the background of all these four prophecies to the, together concerning the child. Then we will look at the content of the prophecy in today's passage that we just read from uh, Isaiah. And then finally, we will look at the fulfillment of this prophecy in the birth of Jesus. And then uh, this will be, uh, these are the three points of my message. So let's, let's get straight into the uh, background of the prophecy. So here we see the first uh, prophecy of Christmas is found in actually all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. We see that after Adam and Eve uh, fall, like the fall, right? They fell in, in sin. And this is what God said. And he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And so here we see the first prophecy of Christmas is actually found in Genesis chapter 3. So here we see the first prophecy of Christmas is actually found in Genesis chapter 3. God revealed to us in this prophecy that a specific individual would be born. He will be the offspring of the woman. And then he will defeat Satan and his, his offspring. So we say this is a prophecy concerning about the coming of the Messiah who will deliver God's people from all the enemies. <clears throat> the second prophecy of Christmas is a prophecy of the stars and the uh, scepters. And and here it tells us, this prophecy tells us that the Messiah would be born a king and he will come from the line of Judah. So and Numbers here tells us a star will come out of Jacob, a, a scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the forehead of Moab, the skull of all the sons of Seth. Uh, Here the stars and the scepter are both royal terms. Actually, 
and here uh, when we read this uh, this passage we are reminded of we, uh, way back we we are reminded and go back to Genesis chapter 49 verse 10 where it tells us the scepter will not depart from Judah nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until he to whom it belongs shall come and the obedience of the nations shall be his so here in this prophecy of the star, it tells us that the king who come from the line of Judah will crush the heads of God's enemy. So you see, this prophecy is connected with the previous uh, prophecy, which is, talks about the seed of the woman crushing the seed of the serpent. So we can the woman So, and then the third prophecy is about the sign of a virgin birth. And also, this is the time during the Advent season. We probably read a lot of scriptures concerning uh, Isaiah chapter 7 or even hear it in, in the church. Here, the prophet tells us that uh, Isaiah prophesies that a virgin will, will be with a child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. So Isaiah prophesied that the coming of the Messiah would be born of a virgin, and this is also signaling that God's presence with his people here on this earth. So these are the three prophecies concerning the child, the seed of a woman, and he's a star, and, and the scepters of Judah, and also born of the virgin. So now we will turn our attention to our passage this morning, which is the fourth prophecy, and we will look at the content of the prophecy. And here in chapter 9 of uh, Isaiah, chapter 9, Isaiah tells us or prophesied to us that a king is coming. The first part of verse 6 tells us, For to us a child is born, a son is given. What child is this? Here it says the child is going to be a male child. And I want us to notice uh, Isaiah 9 and Isaiah 7, the two prophecies, we see, look at the similarities. And here you see Isaiah tells us in verse uh, chapter 9, tells us a child is born and immediately after a child he said a son is given. And then you look at verse, uh, chapter 7, this, uh, the prophecy, the earlier prophecy, it talks about the virgin will be with a child and will give, him, and give, will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. So here you see uh, the two, like a child, the, the, the similar pattern. The word child followed by the word son. So you can, you can say the, the earlier uh, prophecy and this prophecy are connected together. So But what kind of a child is this? And here Isaiah went on to tell us that a child is born, a son is given, but then he is to be what? He is, 
and the government will be on his shoulders. When he said the government will be on his shoulder, this is another way of saying that this child is born a king. So that's the first part of this prophecy in chapter 9. So what kind of a child is this? He is not an ordinary child. He is born a king. And what kind of a king? Not an ordinary king, for he is the king of kings. Because when you look, when you continue reading on, Isaiah will tell us that he is not only born king, but he has been given four divine divine names. And then the first name given to him was that he was he is to be called the wonderful counselor. The word wonderful in the name is a word that means astonishing or miraculous. And also, it also means beyond understanding. So when you put the word wonderful counselor together, and Isaiah said this child is to be called wonderful counselor, so here Isaiah is telling us this child is born king, but then he is also uh, born with, like, he is filled with divine wisdom. He is not an ordinary child. For he would know the things that only God can know. So when he is called wonderful counselor means that he has, he possessed divine wisdom. So the second divine name is he is to be called the mighty God. And here you will see the emphasis, uh, the emphasis is here on power. And when you look at the word mighty, his, the name actually means hero, champion or warrior. The child who is born king not only have, uh, have divine wisdom, but he also possesses divine power. So he not only knows the things that God, only God can know, but he also does things that only God can do. And Isaiah tells us that he is to be the warrior, the champion who would go forth and conquer God's enemy and set his people free. And again, you see this, this prophecy is connected way all the uh, way back to Genesis chapter 3. The, the seed of the woman would crush the seed of the serpent. So woman and then the third divine name is Everlasting Father. Maybe we slow down a little bit and camp a little bit around this word, Everlasting Father. We are not to be confused with the word father here as like uh, we should not take this to mean that like the son and the father is actually the same person. Because we believe in a triune God, the uh, three distinct person, but yet one God. And then uh, people who deny Trinity will say that the Son and the Father actually are the same person. 
三位一体的，他们会说父跟子是一样的。But here, in the idea in these Hebrew words, everlasting Father is actually means that the Son is the source or the author of all eternity. 那在希伯来文来讲的话，那就是说他的这个子，他是永生的来源。And then、uh, he is also the Creator himself. Therefore, he is called the everlasting Father. He is everlasting because he does not come into existence like like us in our birth. He is everlasting because he does not come into existence like like us in our birth. Because he has always existed and always will exist. Because the、uh, like John would tell us in his gospel, John chapter one verses one and two, we we are all very familiar with this verse. 就好像约翰福音那边一开始，我们都很熟悉这个经文。It says, "In the beginning was the Word." 约翰说，太初有道。And the Word was with God. 道与神同在。And then he said, "The Word was God." He was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning with God. He was in the beginning with God. And here in Isaiah, Isaiah is telling us that this child who is born king is also called everlasting father. So Isaiah says, "This child, this infant, is not just a king. He is also the son of God." Because he does not have a beginning. 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 Because he does not All other beginnings. Then, from him, there are other beginnings. Because he is the creator of all things. Because he is the creator of all things. Therefore, he has life within himself, and he is the divine source of all life. He, 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 he has life in him. He is life giving to us. Therefore, he is called everlasting father. So he is called the everlasting father. So this everlasting father is talking about the son, not God the Father. So this everlasting father is the son. And then the fourth divine name is Prince of Peace. The fourth name is the Prince of Peace. Again, we we see that、uh, the emphasis here is on the sovereign ruler. This is talking about he is the sovereign ruler. Because the word translated、uh, translated prince simply means a ruler. The fact that he is Prince of Peace signifies that only him or only this child will be able to bring true peace between God and man. 被认为和平的君就是说，只有他才可以是平安给世人。And then when you put all these divine names together, Isaiah is telling us that this child will have divine wisdom, divine power, and divine life, and divine sovereignty over everything. 那我们把这些连接起来的话，就是这个婴孩，他有智慧，他有能力，他是永远存在，他也是平安。In other words, he will be divine himself, and and what Isaiah is telling that us is that he is God. 所以这个婴孩也就是神。And he is God in the flesh. 他神道成肉身。And when you、uh, when you go back to the the, the previous、uh, prophecy in chapter seven, that's what he said.、Uh, he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So we come to the seventh chapter. It says that he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. So here we have we have looked at the child who is born king and has been given divine names. So we can see that this baby has divine names. And we move on to verse seven, where Isaiah tells us that this child will reign on David's throne forever. We are now looking at the seventh verse. It says, "He will reign on David's throne forever." And here, Scripture tells us of the greatness of his government and peace. Scripture tells us of the greatness of his government and peace. There will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness, from that time on and forever. 这边第七节那边说，他的政权与平安必加增无穷。他必在大卫的宝座上治理他的国
以公平公义使国坚定稳固，从今直到永远。And you look at the,、uh, this thing, and how could this child accomplish all this thing? 那我们心里会想，一个婴孩怎么可能完成这些事情呢 ？That's what it says in the last part of verse seven. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. 答案就在最后一段，那边说：“万军之耶和华的热心。” And again, we see here the scripture tells us or indicating that this child is no ordinary child. So, the Bible once again repeats and emphasizes that this baby is not an ordinary baby. For he is not—I mean, for he is born a king and also given divine name. He is born a king. 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 He is born a You probably will remember、uh, when God promised King David back in Second Samuel. You 可能你啊，可以联想到神是怎么样应许大卫王的，在撒母耳书的撒母耳书下。And then this is、uh, what God promised King David: When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. Who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. 这边神对大卫应许，你收束满足，以你列众同岁的时候，我必使你的后裔接续你的位，你也必坚定他的国。我也必坚定他的国，他必为我的名建造殿宇。我必坚定他的国位，直到永远。Here Isaiah chapter nine verse seven tells us that this child will reign on David's throne forever. 这边有提到这个婴孩，他会坐在大卫的王位，直到永远。And here we see he has divine wisdom, divine power. 我们已经看到了他有上天的智慧，还有他是全能的。And then he has divine life. 他的生命也是永恒的。And he he reign、uh, he has divine sovereignty over everything and bring peace to the whole earth. 他在每一个思想上都有能力，他会赐给我们平安。And he will reign on David's throne forever, not just temporarily, but forever. 他也会在大卫的王位治国，不只是一段时间，是永远。And this is the content of the fourth prophecy of Christmas. 这个就是第四个预言的内容。And now we will look at the fulfillment of this prophecy. 那我们要看神怎么样成全这个预言。And we look at how these prophecies are all being fulfilled in the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas. 我们也会看到。只要耶稣基督一诞生，这些预言就应验了。And if you still remember, the first part of the prophecy said about the child will be born king. 第一个是讲到他出生就是一个君王。And now, when we move to the New Testament, we find that Jesus was indeed born a king. 我们来到新约圣经就会看到。We read that in Matthew chapter two, verses one and two. This is what it says: And Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, "Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him." Matthew 福音的第二章第一节，当希律王的时候。耶稣生在犹太的伯利恒，有几个博士从东方来到耶路撒冷，说：“那生下来做犹太人之王的在哪里？我们在东方看见他的心，特来拜他。” I want us to notice what the Magi said here. 我们来看一下这个东方博士是怎么问的。You see, the Magi、uh, did not ask. Where is this child who is born and will become king one day? Their question is not to say this baby is born to become the king of the Jews. 
So he did, not, he did not ask, where is this child who will become king one day, right? So, but then he asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? It's not that Jesus would one day become a king, but rather the emphasis is here. He was born a king. So we need to ask ourselves this question. Was there anyone in history who at their birth is called king? There, there were plenty of people who were born and then who eventually become kings. Or oh, they, they were many who were born next in line for the throne. Has anyone ever born a king? And there is only one person in history that is born king, and Isaiah prophesied that this child, one, the child is coming. He is going to be born king. And now we see the uh, prophecy being fulfilled in the Christmas story found in Matthew chapter 2. The second prophecy is that he is given divine names. And Isaiah 7, 14, we read it earlier. The virgin will be uh, with the child and uh, will be with child and give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. And when we come to the New Testament, we see that indeed Jesus was born uh, and was given the name Emmanuel. And he is called Jesus, which means God save or God is salvation. And he is called Christ, which means he's a Messiah. And here in Matthew 1 21, that's a fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. Verses 22 and 23 tells us, And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet, which is Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And like... The second prophet tells us that he, this child is given divine names. And then you look at Paul in uh, Philippians, he tells us this, Therefore God exalted him, which is Christ, to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. You see, the word Paul used, that Jesus is Lord, the word Lord is God's personal name. And it's a covenant name from the Old Testament. And then God, God does not share his name with anyone, but yet we see that Jesus is called the Lord. So you see, Jesus is indeed the wonderful counselor. 
When he was on this earth, you see that he, uh, multiple times he has this divine wisdom in him. He knows the things that only God knows. And Jesus in, is indeed the mighty God because he does things that only God can do. And he is the everlasting father in that that he's a creator and John tells us that in him everything comes about like he created everything. And Jesus is indeed Prince of Peace because he is the one who bring peace to us between God and man. He reconciled us to God. And he is Emmanuel. He is with his people forever. And Paul said he is Christ the Lord. Jesus is called by divine names. That's the second part of the prophecies. And when we move to the third part of prophecy, we see that Jesus indeed reigned on David's throne forever. And remember, Isaiah said that this child will reign on David's throne forever. When we go to the Gospel of Luke, we find these words to also fulfill in the birth of Jesus. And we know how, like when God sent his angel to Mary, Mary was troubled by the greetings of the angels. And this is what the angel of the Lord told Mary. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to call, give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Here we see the direct fulfillment of Isaiah prophecy in the coming of Christ. So Jesus is that child. Jesus was born a king. And Jesus has been given divine names. And here we see that Jesus reign will like reign on David's throne forever. And so the good news of Christmas is that this king who was promised long ago in the Old Testament was born on Christmas Day. So the baby born in the manger is the promised one. The baby born in the manger is the seed of the woman who will one day crush the seed of Satan. The baby that was born in a manger will rule or come from the line of Judah and will rule forever. And 
And the baby that was born in the manger is a child born of the virgin. Therefore, Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is a wonderful counselor. He is a mighty God. He is the everlasting Father. He is a Prince of Peace. That is why we bow our knee and worship the baby in the manger. The promised king has come. So come, let us come and adore him. For he alone is worthy of our praise. So let us all together praise his name. And together we give him all the glory. Let's all bow our heads. I request Brother Keith to close in prayer for us. Chichi 我们应该要把自己献上 Shanka 你给我们的是超过我们所求的求你再次给我们力量我们可以一步一步的跟着你跟随你谢谢陈灿他的欣喜还有莉莉提兄的传译 Thank you Pastor Michael for the message and Brother Lee for the interpretation 让我们来唱回的诗歌 起来全程同崇拜 In response let us sing O come let us adore him
本周的经济在诗篇一百五十篇第六节。Let us read the scripture of this week taken from Psalm one fifty, uh, verse six. 凡有喜喜的，就要赞美耶和华。你们要赞美耶和华。Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 现在是方言与报告的时间。再次方言猜错的弟兄姐妹，还有在线上聆听的弟兄姐妹。Now is the time for welcome and announcement. Once again, I'd like to welcome all the brother and sister who are seated here, and for those of you who are streaming online. 教会比每周早上十点半有主日崇拜，以网上直播的形式进行。你们可以进 Grace 灵粮的 Online 的 Church。周二晚上八点祷告会，儿童主日学与其他团体在网上中行使举行，欢迎弟兄姐妹参加。Our Sunday worship service is streamed live online every Sunday at ten thirty at Grace 灵粮 dot online dot church. Prayer meetings are online on Tuesday at eight p.m. And children's Sunday school and other fellowship are conducted online through Zoom. Everyone is welcome to join. 弟兄姐妹，爱心奉献可以使用天子银行转账，在 Grace 灵粮 Church at Gmail dot com， 或指标寄到教会办公室，或在疫情期间最好通用天子银行转账。Offering and love gift can be sent through Interact e-transfer to Grace Ling Liang uh, Church at gmail.com using online banking or mailing check to the church office. Sunday Sunday 将坚定，邀请主日学的儿童一起来敬拜。The church Christmas worship service is on Sunday, December twenty-fifth at ten thirty a.m. The Sunday school, uh, the online Sunday school on Sunday, December twenty-fifth and January first will be suspended, and Sunday school children are invited to join the worship service on those Sundays. 二零二三年一月一日，新年主日崇拜将改在早上十点举行，请弟兄姐妹留意，诚意邀请大家在新的一年第一天一同来敬拜主。The New Year worship service on Sunday, January first, twenty twenty-three, will begin at ten a.m. instead of ten thirty a.m. Invite everyone to join together in worship on the first day of the New Year. 祷告到此，让我们一同来唱三一颂，强情实力，我们一同来唱啊、呃<咳>。然后我们请宋长老祝福。受神的祝福。当愿我主耶稣基督的恩惠、天父上帝的慈爱、圣灵的感动与交通，常与众人同在，从今直到永永远远。阿门。
清楚。Yo me visito. Mo, mo, tao, san, hui.